Now, you can open your Bibles to Luke 19. Some of you know, because I told you that I recently went through a move again. And I was digging through some boxes, trying to find something, and I found an email draft from almost three years ago. I completely forgot about it, to tell you the truth, as I have things lying around everywhere. And as I was going through the box where this was located, I found this once again. I was going to send this out as an email. And it was going to be related to the Change of Mind series. Because that's where I was going to fit it in. So I decided on this Labor Day, why not bring it out? You never received the email. It's still in its rough draft. As you can see, I, I have just, I wrote it down, paper by paper. I use yellow paper in this situation. I just wrote it down, the rough draft to go over it and then put it in a better f format with corrections and send it as an email. Well, that never happened. So this is going to be included in, in the next change of mind. Volume, familiar story, Zacchaeus in Luke 19. Let's read the verses first. And I just thought I was just going to read it to you, rough draft and all, the email that I was going to send out that I never sent out almost three years ago. Luke chapter 19, verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, he was a tax collector, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And I've preached on Zacchaeus before, but that's never through a change of mind message. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to the guest with a man that is a sinner. You dirty sinner. How did you get Jesus' attention? And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restored him fourfold. We don't know what happened between verse 7 and verse 8 for Zacchaeus to come to that point. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation to come to this house. I'll have more to say about that in a minute. For as much as he also is the son of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And this is the email or the potential email, rough draft, that I was going to send out. To the Jews, Zacchaeus was a bad guy. He was despised, hated, because he was a tax collector for the Romans. To the Jews, he was a thief and extortionist. If you attend Sunday school, you might have heard, if you attended Sunday school, you might have heard a cute tune that goes like this. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. Now, Zacchaeus is not just short, but also a total, and you can fill in the blank. And that's how I was going to leave it in the email. 
just a line and you fill in the blank. And anything that you would put there would have fitted. Zach was a total, Zach, excuse me, Zach was just not short, but also a total, let's just say, sinner for now. To the Jews, Zacchaeus was a traitor. He betrayed his own people to work for the oppressors. That was the Roman Empire. In Luke 19, Luke writes that Zacchaeus was just not a tax collector, but a chief tax collector. In other words, he was the godfather that ran the tax collecting mob of extortionists. On top of that, he became rich by fleecing and gaining his wealth from his fellow Jews. In short, he was just a terrible person. To all the people of the Jews, he was the least deserving person to deserve Jesus Jesus' attention. So you then you gotta ask yourself, why did Zacchaeus was determined to see Jesus? Think about that. In Luke 19, verse 3, let's read it again. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press. The crowd was too thick. Too many people pressed in close together. And because he was small in stature, he couldn't break through and get through. In verse 3, something stands out that needs further investigation. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. Why? Because something was missing in his life. Something that riches and power could not fulfill. And he was left empty inside. My guess, he had heard about Jesus from someone. His miracles and teachings. And just maybe he had some answers that could bring him some peace. He was determined to see and hear what Jesus had to say. However, there was one problem and that it was that he was not tall enough to see above and over the crowd. There is no doubt he was ready to receive Jesus. But isn't it ironic, there was people standing in his way. Probably the crowd's attitude was, who cares? He hated Jews, and he will never believe in God. He's a lost cause. Oh, how quickly can people judge? We somehow think we are experts in reading people's hearts and mind. I believe there are many people out there that desire to know God. They might even have a bad attitude and hatred towards Christians. Unfortunately, even though the desire is there, they don't know what they're looking for. And that, my friend, is the church's fault. Unfortunately, there are Christians with their checklist Christianity that get in the way, just like the crowd did with Zacchaeus. There probably were, very, there probably were many good and understanding people blocking Zacchaeus' view. But their self-righteousness becomes a roadblock 
to anyone wanting to view Jesus who desperately needs him the most. Well, it's my job, well, their attitude is, well, it's my job to judge their hearts and actions. After all, it's my responsibility to tell them if they are right or wrong. And I have in capitals, it's not. No, you just need to get out of the way if you're blocking the view to Jesus. There are people out there that are searching because they feel spiritually empty. The problem though is that they will walk into a church and get the impression and feel the vibes of the people in that church that somehow they don't deserve Jesus. You know the type. The self-righteous people that think they have it all together. They close their ranks to keep out sinners. They pretend they are somehow perfect. Sorry, we all have flaws and scars. What they need to see is His light, His mercy, His grace that shines through us. It should be organic, organic, not forced, but it should be naturally flowing in everyone's spirit-filled being. In verse 4, Zacchaeus was a desperate man, not just curious. Let's read that verse again. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. So how do we know he was a desperate man and not just curious? How do we know that? It's simple. He ran ahead. In the Middle Eastern world or culture, at that time, that was a big deal. It was indignified to run if you were a man, especially an important wealthy man. It was considered degrading and humiliating. It was a sign of desperation. Zacchaeus by running in front of the crowd, showed how desperate he was to see Jesus and possibly hear Jesus. And that's just the beginning. Because then, then he climbs a tree to get a better look. He left his dignity on the ground to climb a tree. Why? because he was desperate. And Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was a, at a place in his life that desperately needed Je Jesus. Or him. He would do whatever it would take to get a glimpse of Jesus. Zacchaeus was at a place in his life where he needed something more. I believe Zacchaeus ran after Jesus broken and desperate. He had to come to the end of himself. So what did he do? Zacchaeus climbed a tree to see Jesus. However, Jesus died on a cross to save Zacchaeus. Huh, how ironic. Zacchaeus climbs a tree to see him, but Jesus died on a cross to save him. No matter what you have done for Jesus, 
Jesus has done more. Anything you're willing to do for Jesus, He has already done more for you. God has known, God has, God knows us and loves us before the foundation of the world was even formed. Long ago, God set in motion His plan to forgive, heal, and save us. He restores us. All Zacchaeus did was climb a tree. He didn't call out for Jesus. He didn't say anything. He didn't respond to an altar call. He didn't even confess that he was a horrible person. Hmm. In the church world, that's all the things you have to go through according to their checklist to be saved. Zacchaeus did nothing of the sort. Let's read it again. All Zacchaeus did was climb a tree. He didn't call out for Jesus. He didn't save anything. He didn't even respond to an altar call. He didn't even confess that he was a horrible person. Now I'm not saying you have to put your trust and faith in him. That you have to do. But he didn't even promise to change. The amazing part of this story is Jesus wanted to see Zacchaeus. And that was enough to stop Jesus in his tracks. Remember, Jesus was walking through a crowd of people, talking to him, probably pulling people talking to him and probably pulling at him. Yet he was aware of, his, of Zacchaeus. He held up the entire parade of people to meet Zacchaeus' needs. In verse 5, let's read that. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Just think of all the people Jesus could have called out. He chose the least deserving individual. And he called him by his name. Jesus could have done anything he wanted the way he was going to spend his day. But he chose to spend his day with Zacchaeus. It doesn't matter what you have done. If Jesus wants you, he's going to get you. And it's not about your merits. It's about his grace, his mercy, that rushes towards you when you show the smallest inclination towards him. Salvation is by Jesus. We didn't find God. God was never lost. We were. Nevertheless, He will never let go if we trust Him as Savior. Now, in verse 7 we read, And when they saw it, the crowd that is, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. A man that associates with our, with our arch enemy, the Roman Empire. Place yourself in that crowd. Put flesh and blood in this story. Place yourself in that crowd. He is going to Zacchaeus' house. The traitor. The tax collector, the sinner. The guy that steals from us. The guy who plundered the poor. I probably would have also complained if I was there.
The crowd should have spent less time muttering than someone that, that someone else, muttering, knowing that someone else was shown grace. And that's where I stopped on the email. I never finished it. So I might as well come to a conclusion. Instead of an email, it's now a message. And then when we read, we get to verse 8. From 7 to verse 8, we go, And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, That he was gone to be a guest with the man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. We don't know what happened between seven, verse 7 and verse 8. There's no record of a sermon. There's no record of a rebuke by Jesus. There was no threats. All we have uh, as a record that Zacchaeus encountered Jesus. And from that point on, everything changed about that man. And somewhere between 7 and 8 caused Zacchaeus to stand up and make the declaration that he did in verse 8. Something prompted him to make that proclamation. I think that something was he came to realization because he was empty spiritually that he was forgiven. Now he wanted to give everything he could back. He wanted to help. Not out of legalism but out of grace. And then in verse 9 we read, And Jesus said unto him, This day salvation has come to this house, for as much as he is also a son of Abraham. Jesus is talking about himself. Today salvation has come into this house. Jesus is talking about himself. Salvation was not because of the act of generosity now by Zacchaeus, salvation was a person that's referred in this verse. And that person was the carried the name Jesus. Zacchaeus recognized that he was forgiven. And now he was part of receiving that salvation because of the grace of God and his mercy. Now, I'm sure plenty of else things were said that we don't have in record, on record here between verses 7 and 8. But... He was back into the fold, so to speak. Not because of good deeds, because he received salvation by believing in Jesus as the one that could provide it. In verse 10 it says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. To save that which was lost. Underline the two words, seek and save. Now, I have preached it, others have preached it, that Jesus comes to save the lost. Not much is ever preached on the seeking part, which is also part of the gospel story. The Son of God became the Son of Man, so we, the Son of Man, or men, could become the sons of God. It's a remarkable, amazing concept. That's part of the gospel story. Jesus just didn't come to save the lost. He also came to seek the lost. And that's important.
It's almost like, remember when you're in school, and there's always one person, you might have been that person that was always the worst person to pick if it was, you're, you're playing a sport or a game, and you have to pick a certain amount of people to be on your team. And just imagine you're always that person that's picked last. It's not a good feeling, is it? Well, Jesus picked Zacchaeus first in this story. The most least deserving person in that crowd. He picks him first. The number one pick, as far as we know in this story. He takes him straight to the front of the line. He didn't deserve Jesus' attention. That is quite obvious. Unless Jesus is going to publicly rebuke him for his actions. And I'm sure many who thought then, and even now, if you put flesh and blood in the story, that was the last person that Jesus should have picked or given the privilege to play host to the Savior. It doesn't matter. Jesus picked him. He moved up to the front of the line. It was not expected, and it surely was undeserved. But nevertheless, Jesus picked Zacchaeus. I'm almost out of time, so I have to wrap this up. Jesus got criticized, I'm sure, for picking Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus and definitely for spending the afternoon or whatever part of the day that Jesus spent with Zacchaeus. And the reason why, because self-righteous individuals can never understand grace. They never get it. They pretend they do, but they don't. See, sinners will, even though I hate to use this word, accept Jesus, but religion always shuns Jesus. And you might ask, why is that so? It's because religion is about doing. It's about works for salvation. But grace is about what has already been done for you. And that's the difference. See, religion would have said, Hey, Zacchaeus belongs in the back of the pack. The back of the line. He should not even be picked. How dare Jesus pick him? He can't skip to the front of the line. That's just not right. After all, I'm a religious person. I've been doing it forever. Look at me. Look at all my good works. I am a good Christian. I go to church. I go to Sunday school. I tithe. I fast. I pray. I do all the worshiping things that you can do in a church service. Don't I deserve a, an audience with Jesus? And not this guy. He's not religious at all. He's a demon sinner. Well, unfortunately, that's not the gospel, is it? To them, that is. Unfortunately for them. It's the op opposite of the gospel. And I thank God every day, and so should you, that He doesn't give me what I deserve. I'm so thankful 
that he accepts me by grace and mercy and not by law. Jesus wanted to be with Zacchaeus. He loved him. He wanted to be with him, whether you think so or not, that he deserved it. And I also thank God that Jesus came not to give me what I deserve. Because I deserve to be hanging on that cross. But he did it for me. I couldn't save anybody by doing it, but he could. Because of his grace and mercy, we have peace with God because we are reconnected. We are restored back to the Father. So I can skip the never-ending line of legalism. I can skip the line of self-effort and works for salvation. I can skip the line of dead works because I have Jesus. And so do you. See, Christ has already found us. He's already picked us. He already called you by your name. He's just standing at the door knocking. Waiting for you to say, come on in. Spend a day with me in my house. The door is open. Those are for the... Though that is for the ones that do not believe that Christ is a Savior. Yes, He is. You're not listening to this by accident. You have a void that needs to be filled. It only can be filled or filled with Jesus. All the other things this world could offer you, including other religions, will always fall short because there's only one Jesus. And he gave us grace and mercy and not what we deserved. And he paid that penalty, the penalty that we would have to pay if we don't believe in him. Well, my friends, that's why I always say, I think most of you have been around for a while, have noticed that I say Jesus only quite often. Because that's the only thing that matters. Zacchaeus came to the realization that things in this world does not provide you much. And they come and go. But what lasts forever is Jesus in your life. That's why we have to put our trust and confidence for what he's done for us, first and foremost, to remove our sin, to make us right with the Father, and then to go on living an abundant life, not what's being preached out there, but what's professed in the scriptures. The life that Jesus will provide. Now's the time. The days grow short. The clock is ticking. Now is the time to look unto Jesus for your salvation. You got it? If you do, I want to hear from you.